Hello, Kasia Dzikowska here and this video is going to contain basic introduction to Adobe Illustrator. By now you should have your Illustrator downloaded and um, also installed on your laptop and if you haven't done so, pause this video, go to adobe.com, follow the um, instructions from the email that you've got uh, in your student's um, account install it and then get back to me. So this is the first program we're going to discuss and uh, with this video contains an exercise we're going to play through different functions, different basic functions of Adobe Illustrator. So you can see that I've used my program already. You can see that because I've got some recent files that I've worked uh, with uh, some times ago. If you're using your program for the first time, this area is going to be empty. I would like you to go on the left-hand side of your screen and press Create New. And for this exercise, doesn't matter how big your file is, we're just playing with different options and different tools. You can see that I've got some pre-set items already and depending on which one I'm going to choose, it's going to change the size and, um, and the size and, and it can change different functions in the preset details. So you could actually change uh, those functions manually. For example, I can change the width of my, um, of my file. I can change how I want to see my document, what measurements I want to see in here. I can decide if I want to have uh, some guidelines for bleed as well. I can change the mode of my file, CMYK for printout files, RGB for uh, display files. I can change how high the resolution is going to be, all of that kind of stuff. For this first exercise, actually, it doesn't matter uh, what you're going to choose here, just hit create and that's going to bring you to the main body of our program. By clicking command minus and command plus, you can zoom in or zoom out to the area that you're working in. And by holding space and dragging your mouse around, you can move One thing before we continue, I need you to check if your bounding box is showing. Mine is showing, so in the view on the top, you can see an option hide bound, uh, bounding box. So go to the view and check if your um, option is show binding box. Make sure that you click on that so you can easily manipulate your objects. Okay, so now we are in actually in the Illustrator program and I'm going to talk you a tiny bit through different areas of uh, that you can what you can see on the screen. So like in every other program, on top you've got your main program menu, so that's where you can save your files, you've got some editing options and different tabs relating to different things like changing things with the objects, things to do with type, different ways of selecting effects and what you actually see in this program as well. So that's all on the main menu on the top. And you've got a little sub menu here that will give you more details depending of, of what you're actually working on. On the left hand side you have your tools and on the right hand side you've got different widgets. So um, at the moment I've got properties and libraries uh, here open. I've got, um, I've got an access to colors on the widgets as well and things like that. Now, Illustrator, or actually in fact all of the programs from Adobe uh, Suite are professional programs. That means there is a high level of adaptability of this program and um, that means you, as a user, you can change how this program looks. So, for example, if I would prefer, I could actually take my 
tools and move them somewhere else. Maybe attach them here because for some reason I don't want them to be on the left hand side or maybe I'm going to move all of that section and, and move it to the left hand side or maybe I'm just going to grab the properties and, and move it somewhere else. So you can adopt how you can um, actually see your program. Sometimes when you do that you might actually close something accidentally and lose it. So at the moment I've got no widgets open I've got no tools open and I'm in a bit of a pickle. I can't do anything in this file. So the thing, first thing I would like you to do as a part of this exercise, I want you to go and move things around, close them and mess around with them like I did. And now I'm going to show you how to bring it back to what you've seen on the beginning. So whenever you're working in Illustrator, if you lose something, if you don't know what you've done with your tools, anything like that, the easiest way to bring it back, all of it, to the initial state, it's going to be to go to Window, Workspace, and Reset Essentials. So I've been working on the Essentials layout of the tools. If I press Reset Essentials, all of my tools and widgets are going to go back to the correct to the positions that were saved uh, from um, from the beginning of using of this um, program of course if you want you can go also and try different layouts for uh, different functions and um, whatever you prefer so for example maybe your uh, Illustrator it's going to look like that so you can choose I'm going to show all of my videos on the essential classic layout just to keep it simple I would say try to use the same layout so it's easier for you to follow it's nice to have your layers actually showing so you can go onto one of the widgets and just drag that widget to the bigger box so it's showing for you in a nice and an easy way Okay, let's have a look on some of the tools that you can find on the right hand side of the Illustrator. So the top first tools are responsible for selection, direct selection and selection of separate anchor points. And we're going to use them a tiny bit uh, later. We're going to skip on and try to create some um, simple shapes. So go to the tool showing the box and uh, draw a box. Uh, if you don't see the box you can uh, click and hold on it and that will allow you uh, the, all of the options of different shapes. So I would like you to draw two different shapes, maybe a box and an ellipse. So those could be uh, squished and you've got a total freedom of uh, actually creating them. But it might be that you want to create a shape that is of a very regular proportions, like a circle. So select a simple shape and holding shift while you're drawing your shape, that will make you create um, an object that's got perfect proportions, like a circle or a box. So uh, stop the video and create four different shapes. Okay, now we're going to go to the selection tool on the top and we're going to choose different shapes to uh, change some colors in them. So lower down in your uh, tool panel you can see the options for the colors. The big box that's for fill so what's inside of your shape and the outline that's what will change the color of the stroke. So double click on the big box and choose the color and click OK and you can see that the color has changed in that box. If you select your stroke, uh, you can actually change the color of the outline of the shape. 
At the moment, the outline is very small, so I'm going to Command Plus and zoom in to show you that actually the color has changed in it. Okay, you can also change the colors uh, from the sub menu on the top, and you've got some options of simple colors from swatches uh, that you can pick up. Okay, we're going to play with the stroke a bit more. As I said, all those shapes have very, very thin stroke. Uh, stroke, sorry. So uh, we are going to make it thicker in the sub menu on the top. We're going to change how thick that line is. You can see a nice difference now in between those two shapes. You can also change how the stroke actually looks. Uh, so with one of the shapes selected, um, you can go ahead and change the type of the line and you can see that line in that square now looks a bit like a charcoal line. Okay. Go ahead and change the colors in the remaining shapes. And I'm going to show you another option. So at the moment, both of those shapes are solid. We can actually make an object semi-transparent or transparent by changing opacity. And you do that from the top menu. Now this object is see-through. I would like you to go ahead and change colors in the remaining um, shapes and bring them a bit closer together. And now you, with the selection tool chosen, you can actually select all of them and you can make them smaller. smaller so you've got more uh, space to, uh, to work on this file. If you hold shift while you're doing so, the proportions of the shapes will stay the same. If you're not happy with your change, you can always press Command Z to go back. Now we're going to look on the ways to change the order how those objects, those shapes appear. At the moment, they cover each other depending which object I've drawn first. So my yellow box, I've created it first, so it's underneath all of the other shapes. And I'm going to show you a few ways that you can uh, change that. So in the layers uh, that you've added to the widgets on the side, if you click on the little arrow, it will show you all of the elements that are already created on that layer. I've got four elements and you can see four of them in the box, uh, in the layers um, menu. So you can see that the shape that I've actually clicked on and selected will have a little um, marker next to it. So that will make it much easier for me to find it if I've got lots of different shapes on that layer. So I would like my square to be in the different order. So in the layers menu, I can select that shape and just drag it uh, in the stack. And you can see that now the rectangle is showing underneath different shapes. I can do something similar with my circle and drag it maybe uh, behind my transparent ellipse and my rectangle. So that's the one way to change the order in which uh, the shapes appear. The other way is for you to go to um, objects, arrange, and here you're going to have a little menu where you can choose what's going to happen with the shape.
And now we're going to use some space underneath to play a bit with the pen tool. You will find the pen tool on the right hand side, third one from the top. It might not show, so you need to click and hold and choose the pen tool from the drop out menu. So we're going to do a shape first with straight lines and it's going to be a regular shape that we're going to create. By just clicking and moving our mouse around, uh, we will create that shape. Make sure that your last click is exactly on the po first point that you started. In that way, you're going to close this shape. I will change the color just to make it a bit easier for you to see my object. And I'm going to add a bit of different stroke as well, so it's easier to see on your screen. Now, the second object, it's going to be example what happens if you don't click uh, onto the last anchor. You can see that the object is not finished and you don't have a full stroke around the object. So make sure that you... Uh, finish your object so it's got a nice and lovely stroke all across. I will make it smaller so we can continue with some curved shapes. To make a curved shape when you click for your first anchor point don't release your mouse just drag it out drag it around and you will see now anchor handles those are responsible for the curve of the line that you're creating. So now I've released it and you can see why I'm moving the mouse. You can see that my line is curved and it changes. So I will click now and also holding the mouse button still pressed. I'm going to release it and continue doing similar uh, motions. And I will finish my shape by clicking on my first anchor. anchor. So now I've got a regular shape that it's curved. Okay, we're going to make a shape that's got a mixture of curved and straight lines. So click just to make a straight line, click and drag to make a line that it's nice and curved. Next we're going to edit some of those anchor points. So from the menu, um, tool menu, choose direct selection tool and uh, that will allow you to choose one of the anchors and change it. So I've selected one on the shape on the bottom and I'm going to move my anchor. Also, I can move my anchor handles to change the line of the curve that appears. Right, uh, select both of those shapes, make them smaller, stop the video and do this exercise and then unpause when you're ready to continue. We will now uh, try to create um, some uh, combined shapes using Pathfinder tool. I've changed the color so you can see uh, the shapes a bit easier and you will need to create two shapes and they will need to be overlapped one on top of another. So I will create one shape with just a simple shapes and I'm going to create a sh second shape that is irregular and I will use my pen tool to do that. Going to move them out around now so they overlay each other. I'm going to select both of them by dragging my mouse across both of them and make them smaller. For this exercise I will need quite a few copies of those so having two, uh, your shape selected press Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl V uh, to paste it and then that will create a few copies of the same shape. Right, let's move to the first shape. 
we are going to combine both of those shapes uh, through the Pathfinder. You can find Pathfinder in the Properties. You can also open another window from Windows and you can move it to somewhere a bit more comfortable. That window will show you all of the options, all of the extra options as well. In the properties, you will need to click Expand to see them. Right, select the first two and click the first icon on the left and that will combine the shapes together. And you can see now that those two shapes changed into one singular shape. The stroke is connected and uh, you can, uh, they've got the same color. The second one, we're going to extract the shape on the top by using the second um, icon in the Pathfinder. The third one, we are going to create an area that it's um, combined between two. And in the latter one, we're going to extract whatever it's overlapping both shapes. Okay, so this is your first exercise and uh, make sure that when you finish all of those, um, when you replicate all of those motions, uh, you will need to take a screenshot of your file. You can do it by pressing Command Shift 4 and selecting what you're screenshotting. And I'm looking forward to see you in my next video.